I am here with the very first ever head coach of the Henderson Silver Knights, uh, the AHL affiliate of the Vegas Golden Knights, Emmanuel Viveros, also known as Manny. Manny, how are you doing? Congratulations. I'm doing fine, Zach. Thanks for having me on. Um, so let's start with Henderson. How did this come to be? And uh, why did you think that this was the best move for you in your career? You know, Zach, uh, you know, you always want to get to the highest level. And that's certainly uh, always been my goal as a coach or as a player. And uh, I had an opportunity and Kelly McCrimmon uh, had called me roughly about two months ago and asked if I'd be interested in, uh, in the head coaching position. So I said, absolutely. And uh, we just started some dialogue and with a couple of conversations and then, uh, you know, a little bit more extensive interview and I knew Krim from uh, my Western Hockey League days when I was a Swift Current uh, at the GM meetings and the governor meetings and got to know him a little bit. And, uh, you know, just uh, very fortunate that it came to fruition that uh, I was able to sign with them. And, uh, you know, looking at their organization, um, you know, how Kelly and George McPhee and that whole entire uh, Vegas Knights organization, how they run things, um, they're one of the best in the league, if not the best at how they do things. And just look at their record over the, you know, three, three years they've been in the league and what they've done in such a short period time yeah it's been pretty incredible and I mean they're again a favorite for the cup they're beating up on my Canucks right now I'm not really enjoying that but we're going to get back tonight um so when we're looking at the difference between coaching professional hockey and coaching in the Western Hockey League what is it like for you and I don't know if you've had these conversations yet with Vegas but what are the expectations on an AHL head coach are you expected to run the systems that they've asked you to run so that when your players go up they know exactly what they need to do or is it up to you to develop the system and the way that you want your players to play when they're in Henderson with you? Oh, great, great question, Zach. I, I think probably one of the biggest fits, uh, you know, one of the reasons I think also that, uh, you know, it was, it's going to be such a good fit here in, in Henderson is that the style of play that my teams have played, whether it was a Swift Current or in Spokane, are very similar to how Vegas plays the game right now. So um, obviously we're going to try to emulate as much as possible as we can what the uh, Vegas Golden Knights do as, as far as the verbiage system. So when that transition from a player gets called up to the Golden Knights that there's going to be a seamless transition for them. So, um, you know, I'm going to have a green light to tweak a couple things in certain areas, but for the most part, it's going to be uh, pretty well the same and uh, which, you know, I'm really excited about because we do play very similar styles. Well, that's great to hear. And you're going to have a ton of Western Hockey League players probably on that Henderson team. Uh, you know, the Vegas Golden Knights currently 12 WHL players on their roster and a bunch more in the system. They're a big fan of the Brandon Wheat Kings as well. Uh, I wonder why, but uh, you talked about Swift Current in there and Swift was your first head coaching job in the Western Hockey League after an extensive pro career in Europe, mainly in Austria, and then an, an extensive pro coaching career in Europe, also mostly in Austria. You finished off in Germany before you made the transition to Swift Current. So I guess the question there is what's the difference between coaching professional hockey in Europe to transitioning to a Western Hockey League team and such a small city too, like Swift Current, Saskatchewan. How are you able to make that adjustment so fluidly and so successfully like you did? You know what, Zach? Um, I've had that question before. Um, I just think for me and, and my wife, it wasn't a, a difficult transition. Obviously, the age group was a little bit different, but um, I had a son, went through the Western Hockey League, played in Portland for four years. Um, you know, I've understood what he had to go through. I played in the league a long time ago, all by a different type of, uh, uh, you know, era, but still having the idea of what, you know, these kids have to go through. And it was so valuable having a son that played recently in the Western Hockey League and, you know, talking to him every day, how it was as far as travel, schooling and everything else. Uh, help that transition for me. But at the end of the day, I think the biggest thing for anything was just you know, being yourself, you know, and allowing your, the kids and the players and building a relationship with those guys, just being yourself uh, made that transition very simple. When, when it comes to coaching, what is your coaching philosophy? Being yourself every day, coming to the rink, whether you have a, a good night, bad night before, uh, that the kids coming in the next day understand that you're going to get the same from your coaching staff every day. And if you're not having a great night the night before, we're going to come in, we're going to, you know, talk about it, we're going to figure it out, we're going to find a solution, and then we're going to go forward from that. And uh, that's a real important for me is that culture that the management and the and the coaching staff develop within this, uh, the dressing room that these kids come in and they feel like they can come in and have a safe environment every single day where they don't have to be scared. 
And in your two years, you obviously developed that culture in Swift Current. You guys won the 2018 WHL Championship. And yourself, you were named the WHL Coach of the Year before you went to the Edmonton Oilers. Now, you only spent one season with the, the Oilers and the organization. But what was that like for you the first time coming back? Uh, you played in the NHL as well. But on the coaching side, what did you learn and what did you take away during that one season with the Oilers? Well, that experience was incredible. Um, you don't have an opportunity to work with uh, players like or seeing players every single day, like Leon Dreisaitl, Connor McDavid, uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, these type of players that uh, what it takes for them every single day to, to, to play at that level in National Hockey, not only on the ice, but what they have to do off the ice to take care of themselves. And uh, that was something for me was so invaluable. When I went back to uh, Spokane this past season, I was able to, you know, tell these guys and show these guys that this is what these guys do on every, uh, every single day. And there's a reason why they're the best players in the world. You just touched on going back to the Spokane Chiefs and coming back to the Western Hockey League. And one of the coaches that you had this past season was recently named the head coach, your, uh, your successor, I guess I should say, Adam Maglio, who was a very successful coach in the BCHL, but he has no playing experience in the Western Hockey League, no coaching experience in the Western Hockey League. And he'll be the youngest head coach next year in the WHL. So as a head coach with the experience that you've had, how do you help not just develop the players on your team, but also that coach to get him to where he is now? Well, he, you know, Adam, from the day one, we were, we really hit it off. We were really uh, just from the very first interview and the first conversations that we had, he knew right away he was a bright uh, young man and plus the success he had uh, his previous year. And I've talked to a lot of people about him and they said, listen, if you get an opportunity to hire this young man, you have to do it. And, uh, from the first day that we met or got to work together in Spokane, I was, you know, it was a really good fit. We really liked uh, uh, how we worked together and he's wonderful. More importantly, he's wonderful in how he treats the kids also too. Very thorough, uh, very prepared. Um, he works hard with the kids. He puts in the hours and uh, it was a lot of fun. Like it, for us, it didn't ever seem like it was work to us. We came in every day. We had fun. We did our work and we enjoyed uh, our time. Um, you know, every day in the office together and had a, so fortunate to have a, an excellent staff and uh, he's going to be excellent. Uh, I know talking with Scott uh, Carter and Bobby Brett, uh, you know, during this whole process and they were asking me, do you think Adam is ready? I said, absolutely. I said, I think you got this kid here. you got to hire him. He's going to be a really good head coach in, in uh, Spokane. And you know what? You may not have him only, uh, only for a couple of years because I think he's got, uh, he's got the professional hockey written all over him. Well, Spokane's pretty used to having coaches for only a couple of years right now. Uh, you know, you talk about having, having patience and, and treating people with respect and working together and how much fun it makes every day and how quick the days go by. But I'm sure in your career, you've had to coach some players that have not been easy to work with and have made some days coming to the rink a little bit more tougher than you've expected. But has there been a player that, that you've had, whether it's over in Europe or here in the Western Hockey League, that, that you started off and you said, oh boy, this kid is going to be just a project. He's going to be the reason I can't sleep at night. And then that player ended up turning into, you know, a professional player or, or really exceeded the expectations that you had for him at the beginning of the season. Um, you know what, Zach, I won't mention any names in sp specific, so, but there's always seems to be sometimes uh, a player, uh, you know, maybe one every year or every couple of years. I've been very fortunate in my career uh, of being, uh, having great kids. Um, but I, I, the way I look at it, a lot of the time coaching, um, you know, especially in junior hockey, is a lot of it's parenting in some ways and uh, it's uh, not always easy but uh, you know a lot of times you have to uh, say things that, and and uh, that we're going to help your your children or, or your players sometimes and they may not always want to hear uh, what you have to say but you have to tell them and I think a lot of it too is uh, just building that again once you build that trust and they understand that you're there to support them you have their backs and you can do everything you possibly can uh, to help them succeed whether it's on the ice or off the ice uh, then after that it's it's always uh, uh, you know the relationships are, and working relationships are very easy so um, that's a philosophy that I've, I've had to my staff and we had that last year in Spokane and worked very well for us but uh, to, to single out any one person in particular I really can't uh, because uh, you know you're always going to have a little bit of trial and tribulations when every time you have a, you know, a group of players at around 24, 25 players in a group, 
but uh, for the most part, I've been really lucky and blessed that I have great kids. So my last question for you, as a coach, you don't get the, most of the time to pick the players that are going to be on the team. That's the GM and the scouts. But when you get to training camp, it's up to you to select the team from the players that they brought for you. So when you get to training camp and you're seeing your new crop of players, what are you looking for for a player that's going to be on your team? What are the characteristics of that player and what do players need to do to catch your eye if they're trying out for, let's say, next season Henderson or in the previous seasons in the Western Hockey League? Well, you know, uh, it's a really good question, Zach. Uh, in the Swift Curtain, I was very fortunate enough that uh, well, we had a team that was, uh, you know, the teams that we wanted to, the way we style we wanted to play, and we were looking for those types of players. Spokane was an organization that played that similar style also, too. So they had a lot of players that type of style. And going forward uh, next year in Henderson, it's the same way that uh, Vegas has uh, drafted their kids. They want to play a very fast and uh, competitive uh, and a hard type of style of hockey. And I think for me, the biggest thing is I look at, at their characters. Number one for me is, is, you know, how are these guys? Are they, are they good people? Um, do they handle adversity? Well, uh, do they take care of some off the ice? Are they good in school? Have they been in good in school or they basically put the work while they're in school? Uh, their compete level for me is really important and doesn't necessarily always have to be skill, but if these kids compete hard every single day, a lot of times that compete will overcome a lot of, uh, you know, uh, skill deficiencies in, in, in that type of uh, uh, area. And, uh, you know, those are the, the three uh, very important things for me. And if you have that in place in a player, I think you can do a lot with that player. And you can then it's the coaching staff and organization to help develop their skill after that going forward. Well, Manny, what if you, you don't have a lot of compete, but you're really funny in the dressing room? Would you take that player? Um, absolutely. Yeah, perfect. I, I would have made your teams then. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, again, you've got to have allow. Uh, you've got to have a lot. Allow these players, uh, these kids, uh, your team to express themselves. Uh, you got to have fun while you're at the rink. You got to have fun while you're in the dressing room. Um, and yeah, and there's a time to go to work also too. But at the same time, though, you, but you, if you see everybody having a smile while they're at work every day, or putting, or you know, in the dressing, room, you know, there's something, something's right here. So it's going, going on. That's going to happen. It's really good. So that's really important too. So uh, no, it's important to uh, come to the rink allow every single day <laughs> well i hope that you're able to have that next year in henderson thank you so much congratulations wish you all the best um other than that i don't know when the season's going to start but once it does hope you hit the ground running zach appreciate the time it's always been always awesome and uh, call me anytime throughout next year please love it thank you again manny